guys welcome back to my channel my name is Winnie and I talk on relationship marriage and faith so if you're interested in such topics do well to subscribe and click on the bell icon and to all my subscribers thank you all so much for your support may God bless you all so today I'm just going to focus more on what the video I did last time talking about what you can consider when you are looking for the right person so today I just felt like there are things that I didn't mention last time that is worth mentioning this time around. So that's all I'll be doing today. And I hope that this video will be a blessing to someone. I'm going to start by saying that marriage was instituted by God, which means that he is the author of marriage. Marriage was made, made for us humans. And he created marriage for companionship and procreation. But later in the New Testament, when Paul was revealing Christ, he mesh, he compared, he gave us a different spiritual meaning of what marriage means to us Christians, and he started by comparing the man to the as being the head, and he compares the head to Christ being the head of the church, and the woman being the church representing the church so to us christians marriage is not something that we just do marriage shows us our identity marriage shows us the union that we have that the church has with christ the union that exists between the church and christ that is what marriage signifies to us so we do not take it for granted and i will say that to say that that is why it's very important for us christians to involve the father in this marriage institution because when purpose is not known for something abuse in is inevitable when purpose is not known for something abuse is inevitable so it's important that god the father becomes the the, the guide as we step in this institution that reveals to us our oneness with Christ. We cannot afford to take this institution for granted. And that is why I started this my YouTube channel because I feel like there are some certain things that we take for granted, especially us Christians. Marriage to unbelievers is not the is not that's not the way it is to us. To us, it, it identifies Christ, it identifies the church, it identifies our union. We are the church, it identifies our union with Christ. So we cannot take it for granted. So if you're in the process where you're looking for someone to, to spend the, your life with, you're looking for someone to that, that you want to marry, you know, and go through this beautiful journey with, you have to include the father. I'm not talking about you just going out there, getting a man, and you come and say, Father, this is the man I want to marry, please. I need your blessings. No, I'm talking about starting the process with him. When you um, know that you're ready to get married, let him start within you, directing your steps, giving you understanding, you know, training you, transforming you, and then leading you to that person. It's very, very important because marriage has the ability to thwart you away from the purpose of God in your life. Many pastors have lost their ministries because they got married to the wrong person because they got married to the wrong woman women have lost everything they ever had they have lost purpose focus everything because they got married to the wrong person the father is here to guard us proverbs i want to read proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. it says that trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight so that is what the bible says it say trust in the lord with all your heart when it comes to marriage we are not talking even even about marriage you know every other thing trust in the lord with all your heart tell him father as i'm going through this process I trust in you that you're going to guard me. I trust in you that you're going to open my eyes to see. I trust in you that you're going to bring the right person my way. You know, just commit it into his hand and know that he is going to be there to help you. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on the knowledge of the world. Don't lean on the things that people say that makes up marriage. No, lean on God's understanding. He will direct your path and make your way straight. We can't afford to make mistakes when it comes to this. 
call on the father tell the father father i need your direction i need your help in as much as marriage is for companionship and procreation there is a greater purpose for marriage and i told you that paul has exposed that to us you can read in corinthians he says he compares marriage to the church and christ so marriage has a, a bigger purpose and only God can reveal that to you in your marriage so that's why we need him that's why we can't do it without him the fact that you you found the right person does not mean that everything is going on well nobody gets married because they didn't love the person when people dance and they celebrate it's not because they hate the person people love people before they get married people have ticked the boxes like they they, they the, the things I shared last time, the six points I shared, or the things I, the six ideas I shared last time about some of the things you can consider in marriage, those things are important. But you have to know that after that, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. You know, after ticking all those boxes now, and after the marriage, there are skills you need. There are skills you need to make that marriage work. And not only for you to make it work, but to make it in such a way that it's a ground for you to grow is a ground for you to to fulfill the purpose for which god brought you into this earth it's a ground for you to understand it's a ground for the father to work out the image of christ within you for people to see it's the ground for him where he works on you he uses you to work on your partner so there is a lot of things involved that you need to know that after choosing the right person, that is just the beginning. I heard someone say that marriage is the only institution where a certificate is given to you before you get into the course. Have you ever seen a place where you get a certificate before you learn the course? Marriage is the only institution. What does that tell you? It means that you need to be ready when you're getting into it. You know, there are some things, there are some skills that you need. For example, the fact that someone is the right person doesn't mean that the person has communication skills and we know that communication is one of the most important things in marriage the ability to know how to rightly communicate it's not everyone that has the skills and you your partner might have checked all your boxes but that part they need skill in that area so get into that marriage we need to be ready to work on the way we communicate do i know how to talk do i know how to hold back do i know how to 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 just be quiet do i know how to be silent can i listen the fact that that man checked all your boxes doesn't mean that he knows how to show affection maybe he grew up in a house where they didn't show him affection. Maybe he has never been in a situation where he was shown affection. You know, people come from different backgrounds and getting married to you, he doesn't know it, but that is a skill that he can learn. And many people avoiding to learn these skills have led them to divorce. So, so the fact that you ticked all the boxes in the beginning does not mean that there is not still a lot of work to be done. So that's just what I'm trying to say. You know, choosing the right person is very important, but what happens after that is the most important. Because and another thing is that people change. The person you know today might not be the same person tomorrow. You might marry someone today and the person is exactly what you want, but years to come, the person changes. People change. Change is the most constant thing in life. But by the grace of God, as Christians, we pray that the Father helps us to change positively and not negatively. So thank God that we have the Spirit of God within us to guard us, to tame us, to, to, to make us learn the fruits of the Spirit, which is meekness, self-control, gentleness, love, you know, all of these things. The Spirit of God within us, you know, helps us to become that. But one thing is that people change and you have to know that you need skills. And the fact you are not sure if your, your husband can stand pressure. When you get married, both of you are working. There is no time. He might not know how to manage his time to show you affection, to give you attention, you know. And all of those things, you need to be able to process it from a positive point. And you need to be able to learn those skills yourself you know to be able to know that you know this is what my husband's need i don't know i don't know how to do this but i'm ready to learn how to do it 
Marriage is a place for growth. It's a place for growth. You, you are there to grow. You are not there to be stagnant. That is where God reveals the purpose for which he created you. So we need to grow by the help of the Father. I pray that we will grow in the right way. And also the fact that someone checked your boxes or your boxes in the beginning as the right person for you doesn't mean that he, he, he knows how to spend money. You know, someone can check all of your boxes and when, he come, and when you start living with the person, you see that, oh, he's a bad spender. He doesn't know, man, not that he's a bad person, but he doesn't know how, how management works. He doesn't know how to allocate funds in order to run the family. He doesn't know those things. And, and, you, and you find that, oh, this is something that we need to learn. That's why it's okay for couples to, to take courses. It's okay for couples to learn things. You know, when you see couples who want to grow, they learn. You cannot just get married and you're okay where you are. And you're like, uh, I'm okay. No, it, it won't work. You need to be able to learn the things that you need to learn to make your marriage not only work, but your marriage to be an example for people, to be an example for, for, for people around you because that marriage preaches Christ. Your marriage should be able to preach Christ. I know of many people that have seen them you know, I remember when I was growing up, I used to see people and I used to wish that my marriage would be like them. Why? Because I didn't even know what was going on, but because they portrayed what a marriage should be like. So I thought, you know, so your marriage preaches to someone. Your marriage is an example for a young girl who is about to get married. Your, your marriage is an example for someone watching. Don't think people are not watching. Nowadays, we don't even, you know, there, there has been a lot of talk. There has been, there's a lot of talk, evangelism, preaching Christ, but we don't we don't rightly represent Christ. So your marriage is one of is a way for you to rightly represent Christ. You know. So this is not something that we take for granted. We need to be able to grow so that you don't get married to someone and then you are the reason why that person's life is going down. Don't be the reason why the father will not be able to direct that person to the purpose for which he has called that person because of you. Because you refuse to grow, because you refuse to learn the skills, because you refuse to be the person that you're supposed to be to your spouse. We all have responsibilities in marriage. And you, you, before you get married, you don't yet know. It's when you get into it that you start saying, oh, I need this. Oh, my spouse doesn't know how to do this. Oh, we need to learn this thing so we can work together. We, we can take a course on how to manage finances. We can take a course on how to communicate. We can take a course on how to, sh my, your husband can take a course on how to show affection. You can take a course on how to show, you can take a course on basically anything and most of them are free because we need to grow in as much as we need to grow spiritually it is important that we know that we cannot we cannot take for granted the mental growth we cannot take for granted you know the the fact that we need to we need information to be able to deal with people the fact that your 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 spouse or your wife your husband ticked all those boxes as the right person in the beginning does not mean that they know how to solve problems it does not mean that they really know how to handle the home. It doesn't mean that they know how to handle conflict in the home, you know? So I'm, I'm just saying this to let us know that after you say to yourself that, oh, this is the right person for me, and he has met those core values, those things that matter to you, you know, you know that there is, is the beginning of hope. There's still work to be done because you have a responsibility towards that person and God expects you to fulfill it in as much and vice versa he is expected to fulfill his own responsibility towards you so remember that your marriage is is a representation of Christ and the church it's not it's not something that it's not it's not something that is just there in as much as as we we marry to have companionship and procreate but we should know that there is a deeper aspect of marriage the relationship that the church has with Christ, that is how your relationship with your husband is. So just imagine what your marriage means to you. As you see your marriage, your eyes are opened to what Christ has done. That is, that is the deeper spiritual purpose of marriage.
after marriage there is more work to be done that is not where he ends because people find like oh i found the perfect person for me and they get into the marriage and they take everything for granted they start taking their spouse for granted they don't know how to work on their self they don't know how to do anything and most times this thing affects our marriages like you see women will get married before they got married they were looking so nice they knew how to do do things uh, they knew how to take care of themselves they knew how to just be jovial and and very stylish and everything and once they get married everything changes they don't take care of themselves they feel like they've arrived marriage is not an achievement marriage is not an achievement in the sense that the fact that you mar you've, you're married doesn't mean that that's what you were called to do doesn't mean that you've achieved the goal for life especially for us women god has a greater purpose just like i said Paul in Corinthians reveals to us the, the spirituality of marriage, the spiritual part of marriage, and say that marriage is likened to Christ and the church. So there is a greater responsibility. It's a platform where Christ is relationship with the church is, is revealed with the husband and the wife. The relationship Christ has with the church is revealed in marriage between the relationship the husband has with the wife. So it's not something that we need to take for granted. So when you get married, don't say, oh, I've arrived, you know. No, don't do that. You know, when you do that, then you, you don't give yourself the opportunity, you know, to, 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 to grow. You don't give yourself the opportunity to help your spouse be a better person. You know, you have a responsibility. I, I listened to this woman of God preaching and she said that when she got married, she knelt in front of God and she prayed and she said that if her husband should fail in the purpose for which God has called him, she should be held responsible. That's what she said. That, that is the prayer she made to God. That's the kind of prayer we are supposed to, to make towards each other. Commitment, commitment, commitment. And after marriage, that's what we talk about commitment that's what commitment is all about getting up every day making conscious effort to become that person or to be that person that you are to your husband to your wife that is what we talk about commitment commitment you know and you cannot do that without growing you cannot do that without learning some skills you cannot do that without being active conscious and making choices every day Someone that's been married for 50 years made this statement. He said, marriage is waking up every day, making a choice to love my wife. It's a choice every day you wake up. So it doesn't end with you choosing the right person. I hope this is a blessing to someone. I really do appreciate you sharing your time, giving this little time of yours to watch my video. I pray that this is a blessing to you guys. And I pray that the Father will continue to help us all as we learn and grow together. Thank you all so much for your support and see you next week. Bye-bye.